I didn't see you come in. I've been expecting you. I was told there would be some adventurers wandering in my direction, ready to embark on a journey of discovery. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. I can see by the look on your face that you are ready to know about how Bayesian statistics can be applied to time series analysis. Well, great news. That is exactly what you're about to learn on this adventure. This adventure is divided into two stages, theory and practice. We must first learn the mysteries of structural time series analysis. Only then we'll be able to learn about structural time series and the Bayesian framework. Be warned, this will be the most perilous part of your journey. There will be a great deal of math involved, but you cannot truly unravel the secrets of Bayesian structural time series without it. Once we understand how Bayesian structural time series works, we'll be ready to roll initiative and take on this beast using the power of R. This will consist of two parts. First, we see how to implement BSTS models. Then we will harness the full power of BSTS by including regression terms. But before your adventure begins, we would like to point out some resources. Much of what we will talk about is based on the paper Predicting the Present with Bayesian Structural Time Series by Stephen L. Scott and Hal Varian. For more background on structural time series, see An Introduction to State Space Time Series Analysis by Commandor and Koopman. Or, for the truly adventurous, see Time Series Analysis by State Space Methods by Durbin and Koopman. For implementing BSTS, we will be using the BSTS package in R, so the package documentation makes for a good reference. You may also be interested to know a GitHub repository exists for this tutorial series. There you can find all the presentations, code, and data that we use. A link to this is provided in the description below. Let's begin our journey with a brief review of time series analysis. We assume that you already have some familiarity with time series. We try to keep things simple, but if you have never seen time series before, you might have a difficult time following along. Also note that we assume you are familiar with the basic ideas of Bayesian statistics. If you don't know anything about either of these concepts, you'll have disadvantage, and you should probably learn a bit about them before continuing on your quest. A time series is a stochastic process indexed by time. That is, a collection of random variables with an index set t that we think of as time. We typically consider discrete time processes, with t being either the integers or the natural. An important concept in time series is stationarity. There are several varieties, but we usually mean weekly stationary. This is sometimes called covariant stationary or just plain stationary. To be stationary, a time series must have a constant mean. In addition, the covariance between random variables at each time point only depends on the difference in time. The main issue in time series is that the data is not IID, like we assume for many statistical methods. Sometimes the identical distribution part holds, but the independence part does not. Sometimes neither of the I's in IID hold. The classical time series model is the autoregressive moving average, or ARMA model. The simplest autoregressive model is the AR1, which looks like this. Here, ET is the error term, which we assume to be IID with mean zero and variance sigma squared. We require the coefficient phi to be less than 1 for the model to be stationary. An AR1 process might look like this. The simplest moving average model is the MA1, which looks like this. The ET here is again the error term, which we assume to be IID, with a mean 0 and variance sigma squared. An MA process might look something like this. The AR1 and MA1 models can be extended and combined to form an ARMA model. A general ARMA process is usually written like this. 
VB is the AR part, which is a linear combination of previous values of the series XT. And theta B is the MA part, which is a linear combination of previous error terms. Well, that's it for the time series refresher. If you haven't encountered time series before and had trouble following along, you might want to study up a bit and come back. Otherwise, glory and reward await those who are brave enough to navigate the trials and tribulations involved in learning Bayesian structural time series. Come, stalwart adventurer. Let us explore this dungeon of mysterious treasures. In the following tutorials, we will battle untold horrors and demons together, and as you continue to level up, you will gain the strength to take down those who guard the secrets of Bayesian structural time series.